Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney on this channel. We answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney. Don't mind the pile of clothes here. It's hard in the camera. It's hard to know where you're pointing. Uh, I just got my, my summer clothes delivered. I haven't looked at them yet, I haven't put them away. I just realized they've been in the video for days. Is what it is. I will put them away tonight. Possibly. All right, we got a question here from YouTube user Safety Buddy. I have a safety buddy here on the hobby farm. My safety buddy follows me around and tells me all the unsafe things I'm doing and how stupid I am. My safety buddy is correct about both those things. All right, but this safety buddy, YouTube user Safety Buddy, asked us a question and we will provide an answer. Hello, Vince. Is posting what an employer has done to violate an employee's rights on social media a bad idea when the employee has been wrongfully terminated? If the employee has signed a contract with an attorney that states do not talk about the details of their case, what are the potential consequences of doing so, i.e. names, dates, locations, and details of misconduct violations by the employer? Am I looking? I am looking for more specifically, more specifically than what I have found so far. Thank you. Oh, he's looking for an answer. It's more specific than what he has found so far. Okay. So, sounds like you've signed potentially a confidentiality or a non-disparagement agreement with your employer. I don't know if that's true, but based on what you're sharing here, when you say you signed something with an attorney, I suspect... That that's what you mean. Now, we're going to answer that question last because I think that's the question you're actually asking, but I'm not positive from what you wrote here. So you could have signed an agreement with a plaintiff's attorney, and in that agreement, there might have been some language about you not talking about the case on social media or something like that. One of the, There's multiple reasons why that attorney might do that with you. It's not something we do, but I understand why attorneys would do it. One... Um, in many jurisdictions in the U.S., you can still sell your silence, right? Part of a settlement package in many jurisdictions in the U.S. includes confidentiality provisions and non-disparagement provisions with the employer. That is part of what the employer is paying you for, in addition to paying you for a release of all your claims and to get out of the lawsuit, right? And that plaintiff's attorney might want you to agree to not speak out because, um... If you do, you can't sell your silence anymore. Once once you speak out, it's the internet and it's never going back in the box, right? You can't you can't say, oh well, I'll stop that now. You already did. It's done. You can't you can't undo what you did, so you know that's not great. The second reason a plaintiff's attorney might not want you to speak out on social media about your case is that um, you're not trained in how to do that. No offense. But the average plaintiff does not have the best grasp of their claims and the legalities around their claims or how people hear them describing their cases, right? It's it's very, very common for me to represent people who have amazing claims, really, really good claims, like really valuable claims, and who are really intelligent people, like the brightest in the world, far more intelligent than I am. And they will say things about their case, like, whoa, that is not, that's not your case. Also, you sound like a jerk when you say that. Like, that's not, that is neither the part of your case that makes money, nor the part of your case that makes you sound like a, a good person who was the victim of horrible things, right? That thing you're sharing about your case, and I'm not saying, safety buddy, that this is what you'll do, but I'm giving a hypothetical here. Often, that, that person, that, that client will say things about their case, and it's like, yeah, that's not... That's not the portion of your case. It's not the the part of your life that happened that has value, right? Often, what people share on social media is incredibly destructive to their case and also kind of pointless. Like, I have no idea what your social media presence is, but I assume it's, statistically speaking, less than 10,000 followers. Well, what have we done? We've exposed yourself to a great deal of risk, 
to reach very few people. Yay! Right? Kind of a meaningless gesture in the scheme of things. And you might say, ah, but I know workers there. I have many friends who work there. Yeah, but they work there. So one, they're already subject to the rumor mill. And they're probably already aware it went down. I get why you want to clarify your narrative. I definitely understand that. But what's the value in that, really? You might say to clear your name, and that might have real value. That, that could be. But if they're working there, one, again, they've probably heard a lot about the situation of the rumor mill. And two, it's not like they don't know the employer's an asshole. They work there. They're pretty clear on that. I haven't worked too many places where the staff, the employees of that place of business, weren't well aware that the employer was an asshole. I've even worked for some really great employers. Their employees still thought the employer was an asshole. So it's not necessarily like you're bringing people new information when you say, hey, everybody, that employer's an asshole. The average American will say, well, yeah, they're an employer. Right? Um, now, back to what I think you're actually asking me, which is what are the potential consequences if you signed... Oh, I guess I'll, I'll wrap this up. The consequences of breaching that agreement with your plaintiff's attorney is, one, you hurt the case a whole bunch. Two, your plaintiff's attorney is very mad at you and maybe drops your case. Um, and three, whatever's included in your retainer agreement, your contract with that attorney. And again, I don't do that. I don't try to silence my clients. I tend to view their speech as something they should be able to engage in. I often say, hey, I don't think this is a good idea. Or, hey, can you do media training before you do that? Or, hey, why are you posting dumb stuff to 12 people on, on Twitter? Like, that's not useful or helpful. Like, it might make you feel better, but it's chopping huge chunks of value out of your case every time you do it. There's only bots on Twitter. Stop posting. Um, so those are the those are potential consequences. And listen, whatever the contract says, that is also what could be additional consequences, right? That attorney could say you owe them money back for the expenses they put in the case. They could have a liquidated damage provision. I don't know what their hypothetical retainer might have in it. There's an infinite number of options. I'm just saying there could be consequences. Now, back again to what I think you're actually asking. Sounds like you signed some kind of severance package or settlement with your employer. And it sounds like that package may have had confidentiality and non-disparagement provisions in that package. Don't know where you are and I don't know what that contract said. So this is going to be the vaguest answer possible. If you breach that agreement, you could be liable for a breach of that agreement. Very vague, right? That agreement could have liquidated damages provisions in there. That agreement could not. If there's liquidated damages and they can prove that you violated the agreement, you might be subject to paying them the agreed upon liquidated damages amount. If there's not liquidated damages, they can sue you for the damage they sustain as a result of the breach of that agreement, potentially, if you're in a jurisdiction where that agreement was legal which is still most jurisdictions in the U.S., uh, depending on if you're subject to a recent National Labor Relations Board ruling, which may or may not be effective still and might have impact on this question. Making things even more confusing for you. But I'm trying to give you the most accurate answer, not the simplest one. Now, What would damages look like? I have no idea, right? I mean, like, I'll give you a hypothetical, though. Let's say you work at a steel mill. I don't know where you work. I see safety buddy in your name. So listen, a lot of safety people in steel mills, as I understand it, dangerous place to work. Let's say you post on social media and somebody who does business with a steel mill cancels a $10 million order and says straight up, I saw Safety Buddy post on the Twitter about the horrible things you did with them. And as a result, I am withdrawing my $10 million order from your steel mill. 
yeah, you've hypothetically just given rise to a $10 million pool of potential damages for your breach of this hypothetical confidentiality agreement that, again, I have not seen, so I can't speak to you. I'm just talking hypothetically what would normally be in a confidentiality agreement, right? You need to have your actual contract reviewed by a local attorney so that you can actually know what your consequences are. I'm giving you hypotheticals of what could be in play. So in this hypothetical, you've just committed a breach of an agreement that you entered into. And as a result, the employer has been damaged to the tune of $10 million. Are they going to collect $10 million from you? I suspect not. I suspect the court might not award them $10 million, and I suspect, I don't know your finances, but you might not be good to pay out that verdict. I don't know anything about you, but I just know $10 million is a hefty price tag. That being said, could they do you a world of harm in the process, trying to rip as much money out of you as they can? They sure could. Potentially. If they're successful in their efforts to hold this against you and to prosecute you for this breach of the agreement, they could hurt you a great deal. But also, just you paying for defense counsel, if they sue you for this breach, could get expensive very, very quickly. And that's part of what they're doing here. In these agreements, it's not that they know they're going to be able to keep you quiet. It's that if you're talking, if you're breaching the agreement, the cost of defending litigation from them can be overwhelming in and of itself, even if they're not successful. So if you're asking me the consequences for breaching some kind of settlement or some kind of severance package in which you agreed to not discuss the conduct of your employer or whatever you agreed to, that is a quick discussion of the potential consequences of that. I know you asked for more uh, specifics, if you want specifics, you're going to have to have a local attorney review your specific agreement and have this discussion with you, and that's going to cost you money. I'm sorry. It's not something I can do on YouTube. It just doesn't make sense. But I wish you luck. And I hope you get to speak out because sharing stories is how we kind of develop ourselves as a species, right? Humanity is going to grow forward based on stories, not on my silly little cases where I'm running around playing whack-a-mole trying to rip some checks out of employers for my clients. That's not going to change the world. It's just going to change some people's personal finances. The stories what change hearts and minds, in my opinion. If this video was helpful, like, subscribe, comment down below. It helps me to help more people just like you. And remember, almost everybody works. Not everybody wins. Be smart out there.